something that I do want to talk about is masks, which are extremely, extremely powerful. So we have, this is our base color. Okay, and say I want to mask part of this out. I want to get rid of this color here, or I want to add a different type of texture here, but I don't want it to be shown everywhere. So what I can do is I can add a fill layer or a regular layer, it does not matter. I can choose red. Let's say I wanna make rust. Okay, let's choose like a dark brown. Let's choose metallic. Let's choose not a very good roughness and let's make it pop out. And then from here, now that this is overriding, I, I want my green back, but I wanna use this as my base for rust. So what I do is I come over here, I'm going to right click on this red fill layer. From there, drop down menu should appear and you have add white mask, add a black mask. If I click white mask, nothing happens because white is allowing everything that's in this layer to pass through. Okay, and my options here now with my brush chosen, I can paint in black. If you look down here to the grayscale, white is white, so nothing will happen if I paint on it. If I choose black, it will edit out that map by painting black across the white, therefore allowing the lower level to come through. If I right click again, I can add a black mask, which is what I wanna do here. Now I wanna add rust. So we have our green base, we have our red rust color, and now I need to edit this mask, not edit the red, but edit the mask to have that come through. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down here to dirt spots, double click down here we come back up, we can see now that I have this little editing. So now what I can do is draw my rust on. Now this is only allowing this red to come through where I am painting white. So if we come down to grayscale, you see I'm painting white, which is allowing the underneath color to come through because it is a black mask. If I were to paint black, I would slowly be getting rid of that map, almost like erasing. So that allows us a very powerful, that gives us a very powerful tool for editing just by using masks. Okay, if I wanted to, say if I wanted it to be super rusted and I wanted this whole thing to come through, I can remove this mask. I can add a white mask. Sorry, I could add a, put this above I could add a black mask and this will work in exact opposite. If I want it to be mostly rusted and I want just spots coming through, now I can paint it in reverse. So multiple, multiple, multiple ways to edit and go. Something that's extremely important with masks that can come a little further is say that I want this mask, this green, to only affect some things, certain things. So if I go up here to my 2D, 3D view, it's show me the UVs, and I want this green. But in my grenade, I don't want the painted green to be everywhere. I just want it here on the base of the grenade. So what I can do is I can add a black mask. From this black mask, I can go in here and choose a brush, and I can just paint out what I want to be green. That's one option, and that'll allow me just to paint this. Another option that we have is if I come over here to our little toolbar, and I choose this right here, which is our polygon fill. If you hover over, it'll show you polygon fill. Down to our properties, you'll see we have different options. We have triangle fill, we have polygon fill. So if I were to do that, I could do a polygon or I could drag and get multiple polygons. I can come here, which is mesh fill, which would fill that entire mesh. And a auto, auto mask out this. I could also go to UV chunk fill. You hover over and it will show you. So there I just click and it'll anything that's a UV island that's connected will become that color. And it doesn't matter how that's working. So now, I have this and this can be grenade base. 
So masking becomes extremely, extremely powerful. Another option for doing this exact same thing, but giving us more flexibility would be using folders. So I can actually take this and put it inside a folder. And instead of just having this effect, this mask effect, I can now stack multiple things. I can copy this mask and I can add a black mask and then I can paste that mask. Or I could do the same thing that I did previously. And now I don't need the mask here. Now, no matter what I do, as long as it is within this folder, I can create as many layers as I need inside this folder. And I can add a black mask on top of this within this mask. So now if I want to paint that white color, go up here to brush. If I want to paint this on here, it's not going to affect anything up here because the folder's mask is preventing it from going. So what I can do is I can actually paint down here. Let's actually go ahead and make this red, shall we? So it's easier to see. But if I take this fill layer and remove it from that folder, all of that red comes back because the mask is no longer in effect. So long as I keep everything under that folder, for each component, it becomes a very powerful system. Another thing that can be done here is you can use folders to to edit everything. So if I have this and I have all these masks, I can actually add another folder and I can add a white mask. Well, I'm sorry, right click, white mask, put this folder underneath that folder. Now I can go to dirt spots and if I go down to black, I'm sorry, if I go to white here and we come to black in the white mask, I can now erase everything within this folder without actually affecting these layers. So I can do folders within folders with files in and edit everything on top, which becomes super powerful. If I don't like it, add white mask and everything's back to normal. Okay.